Hi, my name is Scott Naismith, I'm a landscape painter. This tutorial is about colour. Now, colour use is of massive importance in my paintings, and it's of a massive importance to know the theory about colour before you try and attempt to paint or design anything in colour. Every mark that you put on a design or you put onto canvas uh, has three elements to it that make up that colour. It has a hue, it has a saturation, and it has a tonal value. So let's take the first of those, hue. Hues are all the basic primary and secondary colours that make up the rainbow. They are the colours that make up light. They're just wavelengths of white light. The primaries, yellow, red, blue, make up, in the transitions of those primaries, the secondaries, which are a mixture of two of the primaries. The secondaries being orange, purple and green. Now this rainbow of colour um, can be presented as a wheel. Uh, one colour wavelength at the end, joined on to the beginning, creates a wheel. Now what this wheel does is it allows us to understand the balance of colour so that we as artists and designers can use harmonious colour derived from theories about this colour wheel. The most important thing to note about the colour wheel is what colours are opposite each other. These opposite colours contrast each other and are also called complementary colours. Tertiary colours are made up of three primary colours. Tertiary colours are not represented on the outside of the colour wheel. But what we must be able to do is identify where in the colour wheel a tertiary colour's hue lies. For example, this warm brown here can be placed just between orange red and red on the colour wheel. Saturation is how pure the hue is. To understand saturation, we must be able to understand how to desaturate a hue. To desaturate a hue, you need to add a complementary colour. You mustn't think of desaturating a hue as adding grey. Even though we're greying out the colour, we're not adding grey. I cannot stress enough how important this concept is. The main issue a lot of amateurs have with their colour use is the greying out of colour, the deadening of the colour. You've probably heard a million times, don't use black, uh, but by the same time, don't use a grey that you've just used, white and black, to mix a grey. Uh, try to be a little bit more uh, creative with the use of colour to create your unsaturated colours. I've got a quick demonstration of how uh, two complementary colours can work. Often complementary colours side by side can jar together, they can, um, they don't really look right together. You've probably heard the term red and green should never be seen. Often the two colours right side by side can be off-putting, um, but to separate them somehow can work. And we can separate them by the absence of colour, which is a grey, uh, a neutral colour a grey, a black or a white. If we look at the work of Matisse, uh, you can do some research on uh, the Matisse piece, uh, The Snail. Uh, towards the end of Matisse's life, only Matisse, he uh, produced some cut paper collages and on The Snail he uses black and white combined with colours, saturated colours from all around the colour wheel. What he was trying to do was separate those colours with the use of black and white. So I'm going to use purple, and it's a blue purple, and I'm going to complement it with a slightly orangey yellow. Okay, so now I can show you what happens when these two colours uh, mix. So what's happening here is that the two uh, complementary colours, when mixed together, are giving us this grey 
neutral color. Using the neutral color, which is mixed from the two colors involved, um, is very important to keep in mind. So when you have a blue that you want to uh, calm down a little and desaturate, you want to use a little bit of orange or a colour which is based on the orange part of the colour wheel, like a burnt sienna. So what I've done there is uh, just use two complementary colours and then when they mix together they create the grey. By sur surrounding those very saturated colours with grey, it gives me what is known as a contrast of saturations. If we go back to Ma the work of Henri Matisse, Matisse was considered as being a revolutionary in his colour use. He was one of the founding artists of the movement of Fauvism. Fauvism deriving from the word uh, wild beasts. And uh, they were wild beasts of their colour use and they used non-literal colour. Um, but the colour was all based on theories and balance. Now they used very saturated colour and the controlled use of saturated colour is very important. You can't just fire saturated colour onto a canvas or a design without consideration of what it's being read next to. If you've ever wondered why the saturated colours or really bright colours look great in a black background or look great in a white background, it's because it's being read with a balance to something that doesn't have, that has the least saturation. So saturated colours combined with unsaturated colours gives the saturated colours a little bit of a stage to perform on. Something's only hot when it's compared to something that's colder and it's the same with colour, it's the same with painting. And this is what uh, Matisse told us. Matisse was working with colours from all around the colour wheel in high saturations and as soon as he combined it with grey, blacks and whites he was able to then stop bombarding the viewer with all this colour information and uh, give it a balance, a balance of saturations. The concept of complementary colours creating grey uh, provides you with a, a way of creating those greys to break up your saturated colours. I've got this painting here that I uh, produced recently and uh, it's all about this theory. This is all about the, the complementary colours of blue and orange and those blue and oranges are separated a lot of the time. We don't see the saturated blues right next to the saturated orange. The most saturated blues are in this section here and the most saturated oranges are here but there's grey which stands in between those. So what's quite important sometimes is that we understand that you can't always put saturated complementary colours right next to each other. If you look at some of the work of Matisse and, uh, and, and others, uh, including some influenced artists by Matisse, such as Rothko, um, you, it's not a case of creating a vibrancy through putting one complementary colour right next to another. A lot of the time in Matisse's paintings, if you look closely, he'll separate those uh, polar opposite colours using a black, using white, using a grey and it creates a barrier between the two so that we can read them separately. Thanks for watching the video, there's going to be more parts to the tutorial on colour coming later. You can get them by subscribing on Twitter, Facebook or indeed subscribing to this channel.